in this example, if we just kind of take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen, then we say, all right, this kind of looks like a difference of two cubes. It's obviously a cube, but it's not like exactly the difference of two cubes, right? But if I factor out a 2, I get x cubed minus 8, right? And now I could factor that be, being the difference of two cubes, because basically the difference of two cubes is saying if you have a cube term subtracting another cube term, then you really just have a minus b. Now, where, what does a, a and b relate to a cubed minus b cubed? Well, they're just the cubed root of a cubed. You guys, right? So if I'm saying x cubed is like a cubed, that means a is just going to be the cube root of x cubed, which is x. What's the cube root of 8? What number multiplied by itself three times gives you 8? 2. Then we square x. We multiply x times a, which is 2x. That should be a positive. And then we square 2, which is going to give us 4. Oops, what am I doing? Jeez. You've got to write that down below. <laughs> Factored form is x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. OK. Shoo. All right, cool. So we have 1, 0 there. Got that one, right? I'll set that equal to 0. Yes? x squared minus 2x. No, the, the signs alternate for the formula. So it's minus, then that first term is positive, plus the first term is negative. Okay. The last term is always positive. These two terms are always the same, but these are like the reverse, basically. Um, all right, so, so now when we're looking into this, we know we can find this 0, right? This is linear factored form, so we know that 0 is 2. This, this is not a 0. This is just a factor, right? That's just, that's just vertically stretching the graph. That's not a 0. But here, we need to factor this further down, right? So if we look at this, though, what two numbers multiply to give you 4 add to give you 2? Not working out so well, is it? So we say, all right, well, looks like we need to go ahead and solve this with the quadratic formula. So remember, guys, opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So if I want to go ahead and solve this here, I'm going to have x equals opposite of b, which is negative 2, plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So now let's just go ahead and simplify, because again, the question is saying find the zeros, right? So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared is 4 minus 16, which is negative 12. 4 minus 16, negative 12, <coughs> all over 2. All right, so we need to go back and remember how to <coughs> simplify radicals. I'm going to kind of draw a little <coughs> box here. Square root of negative 12. Square root of negative 12. All right. We know we can rewrite this as negative 1 times 4 times 3. Would everybody agree with me that is exactly the same way of, that's exactly equal to negative 12? Yes? But the nice thing is we can break that down now into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. What's cool about that? is we now we know that the square root of negative 1 we use to represent our imaginary unit i. Square root of 4 is 2. And then we can't do anything with the square root of 3. So therefore, we have x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 3 over 2. You can divide the 2 into both of those terms. And you could say x equals negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 3. So the 2 divides evenly into both of those terms. All right. Um, so our zeros are going to be 2 and negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 3. Now, this is where a lot of students will usually get stuck is as how to write the linear factorization here. And this kind of gets a little bit confusing. But if you guys can just kind of remember, like, how did I, if we want to go from, here's the 0, how do we write the factor? So I'm just going to do 1. 
If I know that x equals negative 1 plus i times square root of 3 is a 0, or if that's a 0, how can I write this as a factor? All you guys got to do is set it equal to 0. So you'll add 1 to both sides. x plus 1 equals i square root of 3. Subtract that. So you'd have x plus 1 minus i square root of 3 equals 0. Well, guess what, guys? That is your factor. That's what your factored form would be. So basically, all you're doing is like using the inverse operation of these to get them in factored form. So if I say, what's the linear factorization? You're going to have 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 1 minus i square root of 3 and x plus 1 plus i squared of 3. And that would be your linear factorization. All right. All right, we have enough time. I, used, I was giving the other classes an example to try. But 